morning. I am Paul Friesen. <laughs> Paul is on a well-earned study break, and he will be back next Sunday as celebrant. So today I'm celebrant, and uh, I'm Carolyn Tomlin, for those of you who don't know. And our preacher is my husband, John Ferguson, which means that I can leave the church while he's preaching and I already saw it. <laughs> we welcome you here on this second Sunday in the season of Easter, commonly known as Low Sunday, because so many people are just home going, I did last weekend. And I'm thankful for all of you who've come on this Sunday. We begin our service with Kathy and the Sunday School. And the Sunday School. If you'll come forward, if you haven't put on 40 extra pounds of chocolate, or ice cream weight. That would be lovely. All right, I'm glad you guys are here. Let's do a little prayer. Thank you, Jesus, for the peace you give all of us. Thank you for calling us to believe. Amen. Amen. Please stand for our children. Of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, 
that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. reading from the book of Acts in the fourth chapter, beginning at the 32nd verse. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possession, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and bought the brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at, in at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. Psalm 133. Oh, how good and pleasant it is. When the brethren live together in unity. It is like fine oil upon the head. That runs down upon the beard. Upon the beard of Aaron. And runs down upon the collar of the It is like the dew of Hermon. That falls upon the hills of Zion. But there the Lord has ordained the blessing. Light forevermore. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. 
A reading from First John, first chapter, beginning at the first verse. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands, concerning the word of life. This life was revealed. And we have seen it and testified to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard, so that you may also fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not have and do not and do, do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is the anointed sacrifice for our sins and not for us only, but also for the sins of the whole world, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Please stand for the gradual view.
Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to St. John, the 20th chapter, beginning at the 19th verse. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the people, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so send I you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We've seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger on the mark of the nails, my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them, although the doors were shut. Jesus came and stood among them. Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it on my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you've seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen yet come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written, that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> Let us pray. May the words of my mouth, may the meditation of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight, Lord our strength and Lord our Redeemer. Amen. Have a seat, everyone. I like to pace when I preach. I've been given limits for how far I can pace because of that camera trying to record everything for broadcast. And I'll try to keep to it. But at some point, I'm going to have to move a little bit more than the camera will let me. But that's part of the sermon. Anyway, so we've shifted in our readings. You'll notice that we've lost our Old Testament readings, except, of course, for the psalm. We've lost our Old Testament readings because we're starting to focus on what's being given birth to by Jesus' death and resurrection. The experience of what Jesus has done is transforming the world. And that transformation is beginning with those handful of men and women that believed in him, that knew him, that learned from him, that walked with him day by day. That handful of people is starting to experience exactly who Jesus is. They've had his teachings, but his teachings had led to the cross. They'd seen him suffer and die. But now they've heard the good news that he's risen from the dead, and they're starting to experience it for themselves. Now, over the next few weeks, we're going to read the resurrection appearances of Jesus, leading up to his ascension. We're also going to look at the Acts of the Apostles, the sort of church that was born out of the first Christian's experience of Jesus Christ. And we're going to hear some of the teachings to the early church as we did a few minutes ago. 
when David read from John's epistle. We heard as well what a wonderful thing it was in both of the readings for brothers and sisters to dwell together in unity. For is this great sense that we have unity, not uniformity, these will differ, but we have unity through Jesus Christ. Our common experience of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ has transformed us. And that common experience of Jesus Christ not only transforms us, but it empowers us to serve God in a new way. It breaks down the old barriers, the barriers that people had of class and race, the barriers that people had of wealth and poverty. For we're all one in Jesus Christ, and you can see that in the Acts of the Apostles, as they seek to build a community that reaches beyond the limits of family and unites everyone as the family of God. In the readings today, we have Doting Thomas. And it's sad that we call him Doting Thomas. Now first, in the resurrection appearance, on a Sunday, a week after the resurrection, it's part of why we worship on Sundays and come together on Sundays, for it's the day of resurrection. On this, the Lord's Day, the early church gathers together in an upper room. There are so few of them they can fit in one room. Just think of that. And that handful of men and women experience Jesus Christ who brings his peace. Now Thomas isn't there. A week later, Thomas comes and Jesus again appears and says again peace be to you and Thomas we're not told in scripture touches his hands and his side as he said he wanted to rather we're told he confesses my Lord and my God Well, this Thomas, who we can call, call him Dote, is the first to proclaim that Jesus Christ is God, God the Son of God. He understands the good news in a way that no one else has at this point. He proclaims that this is God incarnate who has worked a wonderful miracle and bridged the gap between hell and heaven has bridged the gap between death and life, has bridged the gap between people, and is uniting all people in his love. And that powerful proclamation is a proclamation that you and I know, and a proclamation that you and I proclaim. For we understand that there is a love in God that never lets us go, and a love that empowers us to serve the living God moment by moment and day by day. And this is where I have to move away from the camera for a second. The good news leads us to evangelize. It leads us to bring that good news to people everywhere. Now, in every generation, we've had different ways of evangelism. This is one of the toys that I like. It's an evangelism tool of another century. You all know it. You see it at the Gordon's Wands, right? And the old Gordon's Wands were an Elizabethan innovation. This old thing was meant to be a tool that was necessary because of a style of evangelism that Elizabethans tried. They actually find you if you didn't go to church. And the rich could afford to not go, so they'd pay the fine. The poor couldn't afford. So you'd have a lot of unruly people in the pew, you know, drunk and disorderly. So they gave the word of the so they could poke the people that were a little disorderly, and they could clock the one if they were really disorderly. So it's really a policing thing of the time of Elizabeth I. We'll put it back later. 
Now, obviously, that isn't a tool we can use today. But we will find new ways to be like Thomas. We find new ways to proclaim what we know in our hearts and believe in our heads, that Jesus indeed is God, the Son of God, and risen from the dead. We find new ways in which God inspires us through his Holy Spirit to reach this world. And each of you do your part. We have unity, but not uniformity. We have unity because we're one in Jesus Christ, but we're all different. We have different gifts, different expectations, but all of those put together give us wonderful new ways to reach this world for him who loved it and died for it and rose again. It gives us the ability to reach out in new and powerful ways to break barriers, and to learn to tell that good news to the people around us, as the first disciples did. So, I'll finish with one of my favorite verses from Romans chapter 8. I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor anything in all creation will separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ our Lord. May the love of God which inspires you continue to use you and use me to make a difference in building God's kingdom here on earth. Amen. To the Father, Son, and Spirit, we give us as justly his due, my majesty, dominion and praise, today and all. Amen.
please hear these requests and things which are only by Cody Flip. Please pray for Michael Tutman, Kathy, uh, and his family. Michael's in hospital as a result of a health relapse. Let us pray. We pray this week for all those caught in areas of warfare, that compassion and justice for those at risk will trump the desire of politicians to seek revenge or pursue national victory regardless of the cost to land and animals and people. Almighty God and merciful Father, bestow thy blessing we beseech thee upon all who labor for peace and righteousness among the peoples. May the day be peaceful, and the war shall be no more. And thy will be shall be given peace upon earth. Through the same name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In our global Anglican community of churches, we bid God's blessing this week on the people, lay leaders, clergy, and the bishops of the Episcopal. Anglican province of Alexandria, where Christ's church is corrupt, O Lord, purify it, where it is an error, direct it, where anything is amiss, reform it, where it is right, strengthen and confirm it, where it is one, furnish it, where it is divided and friends asunder, make it whole again, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In our diocesan circle of prayer, we give thanks to for the parish of Christ Church, Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. Give me thanks for their rectors, Kyle Wagner and Bonnie Baird. We also pray for the Church of St. Andrews, Cole Harbor, Nova Scotia, and for their clergy, Catherine Bourbonnet, Walter Beasley, and Gary Giles. We, we thank, thank you, Lord, for these shepherds of our flock. Give them the spirit of courage and right judgment, the spirit of knowledge and love. In our downtown cycle of prayer, we give thanks for all those who are committed to responding to the need of housing for those who are desperately at risk or danger. Hallow all homes in the pureness and beauty of love, and by thy dear Son, O Lord, born in a stable. Move our hearts to secure the pride of homes, and to convert all sad and bitter problems and no soul to thine. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In our parish, we give thanks for the gifts of prisoners and bid God's blessing this week on our households, for their extended families, and all whom they love. Brian and Janine Hagerman, Dave Patrick and Christiane, Calvin Ham. Patrick and Pamela Hartman, Julia and Olivia, Derek and Mary Hansel, Deborah Kelly, Lila, Pat Kenster, Andrew Killowee, Young and Kim and Ella Song, Grace and Jesse Corner. How are you? Please rise as we uh, read the litany. In joy and humility, let us pray to the Creator of the universe, saying, The Lord, Lord grant us peace. By the good news of our salvation brought to Mary by the angel, hear us, O Lord. The Lord grant us peace. By the mystery of the Word made flesh, Hear us, O Lord. Lord, our grant us peace. By the birth and time of the timeless Son of God, hear us, O Lord. Lord, our grant us peace. By the manifestation of the King of glory, the shepherds and magi, hear us, O Lord. Lord, our grant us peace. By the submission of the Maker of the world to Mary and Joseph of Nazareth, hear us, O Lord. Lord, our grant us peace. Let us confess our sins and return to the Lord. Almighty God, we have sinned against heaven and against you. We are not worthy to be called your children. We turn to you again. Have mercy on us and bring us back to yourself. And those who once 
for death, but now we have life through Christ our Lord. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please greet one another in the peace of Christ. Blessed be thou, Lord God of Israel, forever and ever. All that is in the heaven and the earth is God. All things come of thee, and of thine own heaven and earth. 